Okay, so the Evercade Alpha Street Fighter 2 Deluxe version has arrived. This one has the Sanwa controls built in with a few other extras. And I've just received this from Funstock. I've paid this with my own money. Cannot wait to open up and check it out. Let's get started. Okay, before we get stuck in, I'll have a quick look round the box. It's actually quite minimalistic. Just some details round each side. And here are the six games that's included. We've got Street Fighter 2 Champion Edition, Street Fighter Alpha, Warriors Dreams, Street Fighter 2 Turbo, Street Fighter Alpha, or Street Fighter 2 Alpha, uh, Puzzle Fighter 2 Turbo, and Street Fighter Alpha 3. And as I said, it's got these Sanwa Arcade controls pre-installed. And that's it. It's quite a minimalistic box. And it's got the artwork on the side. So let's see what's in the box. Okay, once you open it up, you've got your quick start guide. You've also got your blue envelope. I believe this is the, um, the obviously the inserts you put at the top of the arcade. And you also have your charge cables and there's also some um, connections here depending on which country you're, you're uh, from you've got some different plugs options and you also have this lovely little Alpha especially uh, designed for this, the Evercade Alpha Evercade controller and that looks really nice we'll have a look at that in more detail in a minute now when you open up it's basically just protected at the top and bottom hopefully it's not got any damage it looks absolutely fine and here we have it Okay, so this is the Street Fighter 2 Champion Edition um, and it's the deluxe one with the Sanwa controls. You can probably tell they are a lot less clickier than the standard version. Um, the joystick is still quite clicky right enough. Um, I thought that would probably be more silent. But yeah, still seems pretty nice. And yeah, don't forget you have got your two cartridge slots to expand your library if you want to play Evercade Carps. This is the volume up and down button, this is basically the on off switch which is disguised as a sort of coin insert box you've also got some headphone jacks at the bottom you've got your USB slots to put in extra controllers like your controller that we got with the um, Alpha or you can add other controllers in here as well to play two player and maybe even three player games in some instances there's not many three player games unfortunately that are compatible but I will go over that in the video so these are basically protectors for the screws if you want to obviously take this off and have a look inside there's some protectors here as well if you want to take the unit off and have a look inside if you want to change any buttons or anything this is a speaker on the side and um, we've also got the champion edition sort of logo on the side of the unit as well if we look around the back and um, we've basically got the Evercade Alpha and some details there it's got a 12 certificate and this is just basically the power socket it is a usb power socket or usb c sorry power socket and this is basically just to make sure the the unit doesn't heat up too much give it a little bit of air uh, nothing really on the top just a little bit of a slanted top as you expect and the other side is basically a carbon copy we've got the speaker on this side and just the logo on there as well that is it it's, this one is quite uh, minimalistic um compared to the mega man edition i think the mega man edition is a lot more um, detail in it but I guess this is what the original arcade was like so it's basically a copy of that original arcade unit uh, and as I said we've got the Sanwa controls these are quite a lot softer than the Mega Man um, standard version that I have you've got your start select and you've got a menu button and on here you've got the X and Y um, and you've got the B, Y and these ones would also be the L1 and R1 button there are no R2 and L2 buttons on this so if you want to play games that use all buttons like that on the Evercade you probably need to use the controller instead rather than the joystick now that joystick is not meant for every game on Evercade um, games like Tomb Raider or something like that really would not be ideal on this arcade unit using the joystick you can play it on here right enough but you probably want to play with the controller okay before we get started I'll have a look at some of the things we got with uh, this package so this is basically the USB-C to USB charge cable and you've got a variety of plugs uh, depending obviously what, what country you're uh, residing in to use just basically plugs in the back of the machine and you can power that up you also have your marquees which go on the top you can swap this about we'll have a look at that what we've got in here now so basically just take this sticker off and you've got various marquees in here 
Oh, we've also got a poster that was included. It's got a, a no. How cool is that? Hmm. So someone's been a little bit naughty there. So they've basically got uh, an arcade Evercade Alpha poster for that. It's pretty cool. But unfortunately, it's got a little bit of a uh, a fold there. That's a little bit of a pain. Anyway, it is what it is. So we've got your various. Uh, marquees that you can go on top of it. They've also got a certificate of authenticity and signed for by all the guys in the Blaze team. That's definitely grown over the, the last few years. I think when we first got one of these certificates of authenticity, there certainly wasn't as many names on it. But it's good to see that the, the team is definitely growing. And I said we've got some various marquees. Now I'm not going to peel all of these off. I guess it's a, a different marquee for each uh, game. And we've got one per game. They are pretty cool. I'm not really sure which one I prefer and what one I'm going to put on. I quite like that one to be honest, that one's cool. But I guess it's up to you which one you want to change it to. They are all very nice. Hopefully they'll do some more of these. It'd be nice to see some different marquees um, for different Evercade games that are out there. That would be nice to see. And we've also got the Quick Start Guide which is included. Um, basically just goes over all the different parts of the, the Alpha and how to get started. Pretty straightforward to be honest. Okay, so let's have a look at the gamepad. This is the blue and light blue themed gamepad that's specifically for this um, Evercade Alpha. That's really cool. Obviously, if you want to play other games, such as maybe Tomb Raider, Soul Reaver, um, maybe Duke Nukem 3D, you really probably want to use the uh, gamepad rather than the, the joystick on the Evercade Alpha because it's really not meant for a joystick. Uh, you'll get better experience playing with this. This is nice. I like the, the design of it. The buttons, it's basically just an Evercade VS controller um, just with a different theme on it. It's got a really nice D-pad on it. Not sure if that's changed, it seems a little bit different. There's certainly a lot more movement than than I can recall. Actually, let me compare it to my one that's all <laughs> thingied up. Nah, it's basically the same. Yeah, this is the, the Duke Nukem one. Sorry, it's all wrapped up. Um, but that's basically what you do when you're tucking it away. So yeah, the menu button, start and select, and you've got your two shoulder buttons on the back. So obviously also the Alpha doesn't have all four shoulder buttons. So if you're playing games that use all four shoulder buttons, again, you're going to have to use the joypad or the gamepad instead of uh, the joystick instead. But yeah, that's it. Nothing really on the back, just Blaze Entertainment. Okay, so first things first, I'm going to remove the uh, peel on the marquee. And um, you can actually just take this off, it just basically clicks off, if you just sort of pull it from there, you can actually pull it off and take this sort of peel off, basically it's just a bit of plastic there, so if you take the peel off here, um, then you can put it back. So you have to obviously take the peel off, the, the little sort of tab broke away, but yeah, what a pain. Basically take this off, and you can discard that, then you can obviously replace that back on, like so. Um, or you can put in one of the other ones that came with the actual unit. Then you just basically put it back in. It's pretty straightforward. Actually, probably the best thing to do is actually put the marquee or plastic piece in first. Like so. And then you can put in the, the protective part after that. So basically that's it on. And that's it back in. Probably a little bit of a faff around, but uh, it comes out easier than it actually goes in. <laughs> She said. So the other thing you need to do obviously before you start is uh, peel off the protective film. Now when I had done this on the Mega Man version it left quite a lot of pieces round about. Now it, it does say peel from here and, and basically try and pull it up the way but I still left quite a lot of plastic and basically had to remove the unit here to actually get rid of all of it so it is a little bit of a pain. Nope. I have to say, removing this plastic cover is an absolute pain in the butt. And there's no way you can do it with uh, getting rid of all of it. You're going to have to take these screws out to get rid of all the little bits of plastic. What an absolute pain. The same happened with my Mega Man. Maybe it's just me, but I'd love to get some feedback and anyone else that has one of these. Did you manage to get this plastic off in the one time? So your Alpha will most likely have an update uh, when you turn it on once you've connected to the Wi-Fi. Definitely want to update it so you can get the latest controls uh, for your Alpha, like Turbo Fire, that type of thing. So hopefully um, this won't take too long. 
Okay guys, before we get started, I was going to do a quick comparison between the standard version and the uh, sort of deluxe version. Obviously these are Sanwa controls and you can probably see they are a little bit softer on the touch. You can probably just see there is a subtle difference, it's not an awful lot. Um, if I maybe zoom out you can maybe... These ones maybe just feel a little bit more plasticky. They definitely feel a little bit cheaper than the Sanwa controls. They definitely are as small differences. Now I think if you're an expert in this you will probably uh, notice the difference a lot more than someone with no experience like me. But I can clearly see that these buttons themselves do appear a little bit clickier. They look a little bit more plasticky than uh, sort of these ones. These ones have a nicer finish to it and they, there's a, a, sort of a more softer feel to them than um, the deluxe. As you see they are a little bit more clickier. The joystick itself, it's this one's fine. I think this one's definitely the movement and it is a little bit softer. But for me, there's not an awful lot of difference in it. Is it really worth the extra expense? I'm not entirely sure. I think hopefully these are a little bit more longer wearing. And in playing games such as Street Fighter, that will probably come into its own. And hopefully it will last a lot longer than probably standard buttons and joysticks will. Um, but I don't. for me, I'm not really an expert, so only an expert would probably notice the difference in these different sort of controls. But I can clearly see um, there is a small difference in quality um, compared to the standard version for sure. Okay guys, so let's have a look at the uh, Street Fighter 2 Alpha Edition and obviously you've got different uh, sort of menu options down the side. You've got the, the Alpha which is where your um, 6 arcade inbuilt games will be and we'll play through them very very soon. Um, you've also got the Evercade cartridge option if you want to put a cartridge into your Alpha to play Evercade games which we'll do later in the video, you can do that. But just remember, not every game is going to be great on the joystick. You will probably have to use the, the sort of included gamepad if you want to uh, play some games like Tomb Raider for example. Um, obviously if you don't have a gamepad, you should be able to put in various different gamepads and they should be uh, picked up and then you can map it as well uh, in the settings. And this section is where you will find the game of the month. Um, which gets updated pretty much every month from usually around about April to December time and this is basically a sneak peek of anything uh, or the stuff that's going to be on Indie Heroes Collection 4 at present that's going to be released in February 2025. Uh, the game at present is Bati Zabella um, but I'm pretty sure that will be updated uh, in probably the next week for December there will be a new game and probably the last one um, for Indie Heroes Collection 4 that should release soon. And then you go into the library, you can browse through all the carts that are available on Evercade. Uh, there's a few different options here, you can browse at the arcade, computer, console, uh, and as soon as you put the arcade collection in, uh, to the machine it will recognise that you actually own it. Um, and we will actually have a look at some of these new collections um, in this video as well. These have just arrived too which is fantastic. There's lots of arcade collections, we've got 13 arcade carts, 8 home computer collections and we've got 42 um, console collections so that's almost what's that 63 collections so far on Evercade across the last four years and we will most likely get tons more next year hopefully it'll be more carps uh, than this year and um, you can look at the latest stuff as, as well that's just recently released it says coming December but they've actually managed to ship them a little bit early to some territories not everyone's going to get them early but they still should ship before um, uh, Christmas time and we've also got uh, To A Plant Arcade 3 uh, which is out at the end of this month uh, at the time of this video, that is November. You can also browse every single game that's on Evercade. Um, instead you've got over 500 games, a lot of different variety um, and I've covered a few of these um, games on the Alpha and maybe picked a few that really work well. Obviously the arcade carts are going to be brilliant for this, perfect. Home computers are a little bit mixed. There's a lot of great console games out there that are great on here, which I've really still to cover. I will cover that in a later videos. Um, but there's a lot of games probably aren't quite perfect for the joystick. So, as I said, I would probably recommend getting a joypad, especially if it uses all four shoulder buttons. And lastly, we've got the settings. You can change the display, different ratio. Uh, I would recommend definitely turning on the scan lines for playing the arcade games. Maybe not necessarily the uh, console games, but for arcade, absolutely. You can change the bezels as well uh, if you want to, and you've got uh, in-game dynamic rate control. Probably more so for like C64 games, so it maybe sticks to the, the sort of 50 hertz type of thing. 
uh, and you've got the auto demo mode you can turn it on and off if you leave this standing it will jump into a demo randomly of the inbuilt arcade games uh, which is pretty cool you've got different themes as well you can choose the different themes that are available obviously it's the street fighter theme that's uh, at present you've got the different uh, options for uh, the background music now i'll turn up just for the, the purposes of showing you how good the sound is in the arcade it does get pretty loud you can obviously put some headphones in uh, and listen to it that way and that's absolutely fine and uh, the sound does vary from game to game i found that the arcade stuff is brilliant but some of the sort of older stuff maybe like in television the nest tell sometimes uh, the sound is a little bit muffled but it really just depends which game you're playing and what uh, platform those games were built on but for the best part the sound is fantastic network uh, as we've already seen you can connect to um, the the Wi-Fi and you can toggle high contrast mode if you're maybe a little bit hard uh, you've obviously got some eyesight issues perhaps change your language that's the the language options system check for updates you will get a little warning down here but this will be have a little red dot over it if there is a update available and it'll just uh, ask you if you want to update enable analog support that's an option there if you want to you can map a controller if you've got a controller you want to go in and map it just hold down any button B to cancel reset controller mappings if you've obviously changed some of the mappings to some of the games you want to reset it and start again and this option here is if you have any issues with your carts you can enforce a patch that should maybe some fix it sometimes it's a little bit hit and miss that option legal support just goes through a whole list of the people uh, and all the different copyright um, details credits all the people from blaze and various other people that worked on this project uh, for the evercade alpha Thank you for all of them. Secret. Now you might want to unlock some secret games. I think I've maybe just missed that section. If you go back to the star asterisk, there is nine games, hidden games, uh, included here. But you have to unlock them with secret codes or some button combos on uh, the front of the alpha here. Now I'm not going to go over them in this video. I have covered that in plenty of videos there is a site evercade.info if you want to unlock all the hidden games on your alpha um, i can maybe give you one to start if you go into the secret section here uh, and you put in i think the code is stone it should unlock a c64 game i think that was the, the one of them yep you will unlock rogue 64 which is a nice little rpg uh, C64 game uh, and I'm not really sure it's great for um, the alpha but it's there you can play it if you want to it's actually really nice though sadly I think the Amiga version which came out very recently is definitely the one to play it's much much better but um, this is still really good fun it was actually very addictive once you've unlocked the secret game it basically jumps into the hidden game section then we've unlocked that you've got another eight games to unlock as I said, I'll leave a link in the description for Evercade.info. You can get all the details there for all the games for your alpha. And maybe I'll drop in some videos. I have made lots of videos about all the uh, hidden games on the Evercade devices. So that is basically everything on there. So if you want to look at the, the demo, it will kick in after a certain amount of time. I think it's two minutes that the setting was up. Or you can press Y and it will jump into a demo uh, of your chosen game. Pretty nice just to leave if it was a feature on maybe a little setup you've got a little gaming room you've got a setup you can just leave the demo running the unit itself doesn't heat up so it's absolutely fine uh, i've not noticed any of these uh sort of arcade machines heating up it is still totally cool i guess that, that is well protected there's lots of vents it, it certainly doesn't suffer from overheating it is a very very sort of low underpowered sort of device okay guys let's have a look at the game so we've got street fighter 2 turbo Street Fighter, oh sorry, Puzzle Fighter 2 Turbo, we've got Street Fighter 2 Champion Edition, Street Fighter Alpha Warriors Dreams, Street Fighter Alpha 2, Street Fighter Alpha 3, Street Fighter 2 Turbo, that's obviously back to the start, very cool, I'm not sure what one I'll start, I'll probably start at the, the very beginning here, we've got Street Fighter 2 The Champion Edition, and I'm not really an expert in these games so please do not judge the gameplay, we'll just jump in quickly, you've got the option to jump to a last save if you've created a save state, if you go to the three dots here, You've got different options. You can put a coin limit on if you want to limit your um, coins, um, which is a, a bit crazy. You want to play in competition mode, that will basically stop the save states. You can't use that. You want to edit the controls, you can do in here as well. And this little asterisk, or sorry, this little exclamation mark is basically a warning that there's uh, some flashing images just in case you are 
um, susceptible to that and there's a list of the controls as well for the game and there's stats here for how long you've played the game play count blah 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 which I haven't played at all yet so this will be fun basically a first experience here we go so I'm just really going to have a quick play of the game it won't be any in-depth gameplay it won't be any expertise gameplay but let me turn the sound up slightly so get started you press the select or add a coin and then press the start button which is over here Handed here. Oh dear. Oh, I pulled off a nice move there. Yay, I pulled it off. I'm not actually trying to beat this guy, I'm actually trying to just pull off the special moves. <laughs> Definitely try and remember what those special moves are. I think I'm really just bashing the button and hope for the best. Oh well, at least I won a round. Oh, this computer is cheating. Absolutely no chance. So hopefully Blaze will maybe introduce dip switches in their latest update um, for this. It has been rumoured for some time, given the fact some of these games are pretty difficult, it would be good to get some access to the dip switches and perhaps make the games a little bit more easier. Especially for guys like me, I'm not a massive expert on Street Fighter. My sort of expertise was probably the, the Mega Drive version of Street Fighter 2, which it was probably a lot more easier to play than this. And, and Playing the arcade versions is extremely tough, so hopefully we will get some dip switches at some point soon. Um, I really hope that does happen, it would make a massive difference to some of these games. Now if you press the menu button you've got access to the different saves, you can save your state, if you save the, the slot you've got six slots to choose from, you can do a quick slave, just choose whatever slot you want, and you can actually delete them as well, and you've got the X button to delete, and you can just basically load it back into which is fine. And here you've got access to the controls, you want a quick look at the controls and the, the uh, sort of display settings as well. And you can just reset that game or quit back to the main menu. Okay, let's have a look at the next game. We've got Street Fighter Alpha Warriors Dreams. Now, I'm not an expert in these games, as I said, I am absolutely terrible at Street Fighter. I, I need a lot more practice. And most of these games are two players. Um, I, think, I don't think there's any three player games. Let me have a look quickly. I don't think any of them are three players. Nope. Nope. So yeah, none of the, the included inbuilt games are actually three players. There is only one three player game um, that you could probably play at the moment, um, and that would be the Combo Tribe, which is on Technos Arcade. Um, and I've, I've done a playthrough of that on a separate video, so I will leave a link if you want to look at three players on this. But realistically, playing multiplayer on uh, this is probably not ideal. I mean, obviously the, the first player plays on uh, the actual unit, the second player you plug in uh, a gamepad into slot number one, I think it is, or slot number two, sorry, and that basically becomes the second player. If you put a joypad into uh, the slot one, it basically just overrides the controls that's already there for player one. Uh, but yeah, it's probably not ideal for two players. You can do it, but yeah, someone's going to be looking over at your shoulder and, and they probably won't have the best viewpoint. Anyway, let's have a look at Street Fighter Alpha and have a bash at that. Now, a lot of these games are going to be quite sim similar. A lot of the games are maybe just a little bit more upgraded, slightly different graphics, more fighters. I'm pretty sure some of these games did appear on various formats over the years, such as like the PlayStation, for example. This one definitely looks a little bit uh, slightly more fancier, sort of cell shaded graphics almost. Let's choose a different fighter this time. Oh, who am I going to choose? I got. Now you can choose between normal and turbo. No, I think I'll stick to turbo. <gasps> I'm pretty sure that's the character from Final Fight, isn't it? The graphically, you can definitely see the difference here. And I can't pull off any of the special moves, I have no idea. Yeah. 
Take that, so dumb. So one thing that would be nice um, if the controls for each of the game were included in the actual uh, box here, but unfortunately there are no controls uh, there. It would have been nice to have a list or a, a sort of control sheet uh, or some sort of manual included with this for these inbuilt games, but sadly there's not. If you want to know what the actual controls are, um, you probably need to go on to the Evercade website and there will be a section, I think there is a section where you can see the, the games and maybe the controls and the special moves there. It would have been nice if they'd actually included that, a manual or something with these uh, units. Considering the amount of money that we're playing for these and, and there's no manual is a bit crazy. And they always pride themselves on manuals uh, with their Evercade products, so a little bit of a crazy missed opportunity there. So let's move on to Street Fighter Alpha 2. I guess this must be the sequel to the game we've just played. And most likely more characters to choose from. So as you can see there's a lot more characters to actually choose from. Nice, some of these characters recognise that, looks like another Final Fight character as well I'm sure. Now let's go this guy, he looks crazy. Oh, I've just choose, chose the uh, alternative costume. Oh, speaking of that guy from Final Fight, here he is. He was horrible. Constant grenades. Oh yeah, so there's, this one does have the sort of combo where you can maybe put in a few different hits at the one time. Very nice. Yeah, I like it. Definitely makes it a little bit different to the other games that are here. Oh, still very hard though. That one is quite cool, I think that's my, my favourite one so far. So Street Fighter Alpha 3, let's have a quick look at that. So there's a little bit of information here if you want to read through the, the history of each of the games. And um, we've got Street Fighter Alpha 3 features all 18 characters from the previous entry and adds a selection of new characters. So we've got now we've got Cody from Final Fight as well. So that is nice. Cody says, if you want to play as a random character, move above Dan or below Zanjeef in the character screen. Oh, we've got tons of characters. Now let's find the new character guy. Where is he? Oh, there he was. Let's have Guy. Oh. I have no idea what that means. Turbo or normal? Yeah, let's go for turbo. Let's go crazy. Go for it, man. These games definitely seem a little bit more advanced than your original Street Fighter. Jeez, this is way too fast for me. <laughs> and guys, please don't judge the gameplay. Um, I have no clue what I'm doing sometimes. I'm just a bit of a button basher when playing some of these games. Sometimes it works. Oh my, certainly some close fight and battles here. Yay, take that Kami. Very nice, I like that. The Alpha games are really, really cool. I love them. They're really good. Okay, so here we have Street Fighter 2 Turbo. This one will probably be super, super tough. So Street Fighter 2 Turbo. No, Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo, not to be confused with the Hyper Fighting or Super Street Fighter 2. It's the fifth release in the Street Fighter 2 sub-series. Wow, how many different versions can you really need? This one is definitely one I'll have to practice for sure. Ah, oh, I've definitely played this one before I recognise that. I'm sure some of these games have released, maybe even on the Switch as well, over the, the years. This one definitely seems quite far advanced. Let's just get started. Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo, what a mouthful. Uh, what character will we go this time? So the characters do seem pretty standard to the original. Oh, there's a, a few added extras, let's go back to Ryu. Oh, he's very quick. Whoa, he's cheating. Jeez, oh that didn't take long did it? Yeah, I know. Okay, last of the inbuilt games we've got Puzzle Fighter 2 Turbo. A little bit different I guess here. Uh, and shake it up, that's nice to see. Honestly, I'm not entirely sure what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, definitely not entirely sure. Oh, here's a gem, so let's smash this. 
Oh, that only smashes into the green ones. Oh, what's going on now? Oh dear. Yeah, so that's come from the other side, obviously. Oh, gee. Yeah, I'm messing up big time. Oh, I need a blue one, right? This one down here would be good. Woof, that's good. Right, there's a red one now. <coughs> yeah, that's better. Look at that. Okay, I think I've got the hang of it now. Yeah, look at the pressure they're under now. Oh, what's the gem? I have no idea. Yay! Okay, I think I got the hang of that. That's quite cool. Not really sure it works that great on an arcade machine though. Okay guys, so that is the inbuilt games. Now I have to say, the sound is fantastic. The controls are actually really nice. Um, I've definitely noticed the, the sort of less clicky uh, when playing the game, so that's definitely less annoying. Um, so it would be probably quite cool to play some of the Two of Planet arcade games on here, which I'll do in a little minute, so it's not quite as clicky um, pressing the buttons. But obviously we've got the turbo fire function, so you don't need to keep pressing the buttons anyway. Uh, but yeah, nice enough uh, added games. If you're a Street Fighter fan, then I'm pretty sure you will really enjoy these. There's some great games. I'm not really a big fan of the, the standard Street Fighter, but the Alpha games are fantastic fun, really good. Yeah, it would probably be nice to get some two-player action as well. Um, but playing these uh, sort of arcade machines, they are quite small, they're sort of countertop. Playing two player, you can get away with it, but the second player is probably a little bit of a disadvantage by having to look over your shoulder. Um, but you can do it, any more than that is just really not ideal at all. But the, the alpha games are nice, turbo games quite good fun, uh, but it's really really tough uh, and the, the puzzle fighter is good. But for me I would probably buy these definitely for those Street Fighter alpha games, those are really good high quality games. We well, have to say only six games, maybe it would be nice to get more, it would have been nice to combine the, the Mega Man with this as well and then you get 12 games. Um, but I don't think Blaze could do much about that, it's obviously Capcom setting the license here. Um, but it is what it is, it maybe not the greatest value, 200, 250 for the Deluxe with the, the San, San Juan buttons, maybe not the greatest value, but still it is comparable to a lot of countertop devices out there. I've seen a lot of the, the other alternatives that Capcom do and some of them only have two or three games at best so for this you've got um, six inbuilt games and you can expand by playing all the other cage stuff. I think this has definitely got one up in pretty much all the other competition out there. Okay guys I'm going to have a quick look through the four latest carts that got delivered as well. We've got two of plan arcade three, four, we've got Dat East two uh, and we got the Metal Dragon Life on Mars. Now I will look at all these carts in separate videos uh, as well, but I'm going to have a quick playthrough. Uh, so to give you an idea of what other stuff you can actually play on the Alpha and how well some other things play, like obviously shoot 'em ups would be quite cool to check out on the Alpha. This is definitely a really cool collection. I will look at this in a separate video. Perhaps one of the best ever Cade carts released, certainly the best tour plan collection released so far. You've got some great games such as Batsagun, and you can see here you can just press the Y button for the turbo fire. There's a lot of the games on the arcade collections, you can use that function now. And um, There's been a latest firmware update that you should be able to use the turbo fire function for a lot of the arcade shoot em ups. And it does make a massive difference without having to constantly press down on that button. Now I guess one of the only things about this is in a tatty mode, the vertically aspect ratio, uh, which you will get the borders on the screen here. You can stretch the screen if you want, but it looks terrible. It's not something you really, really want to do. It does sound absolutely fantastic. Oh, that's a special move, silly me. You see, you can hold down the, the Y button, or you can just press the uh, the B button to fire randomly, but it's definitely easier holding down the Y button and concentrating on the game.
what is not to love about this? Hey guys, move on, quick look at to a plan arcade 4. Um, slightly less shooters, a little bit more variety in this one, but let's have a look at some of the games. We've got Doggin, Grindstormer, Knuckle Bash, Pippin Bibbies, Sky Shark, Snow Brothers 2. Let's have a look at Knuckle Bash. Wow, this looks so good on here. Oh, love it. <laughs> How good does this look, guys? This looks fantastic. Oof, right in the nether regions. Woo, so cool. That is actually a fun game. Okay, guys, now there is actually a secret game if you put into a plan three and four. If you don't want to know, apologies. You may want to skip this section. So if you put the two carts in, it will actually unlock a secret game, uh, which is, I think it's this one here, Snow Brothers, which looks like, I don't know, is this a, a console version? A co oh, this is the console port of Snow Brothers, was handed, handled in-house by Tourplan. I'm not entirely sure what it is, it may be the NES version or Mega Drive, let's have a look. Most likely the NES version. Yeah, 100%. I thanks. This is where maybe you might notice a slight difference in the sound quality, it goes down slightly. It does vary from game to game, but it's still pretty good, but it gives it a slightly more muffled feel to it. This is actually quite cool. Obviously it's a kind of arcade based game anyway, so it still uh, is very much at home on the Evercade Alpha. Perhaps just a little tip here is for your carts. Ideally, you probably want to press the select eject cart um, before you pull them out. Maybe don't take your carts out um, whilst they're in the game or while you're saving because you could corrupt them and cause some issues. Ideally, you want to do this, uh, press the select button at the, the main screen there and you can eject both carts at the same time. Take them out safely. Okay, next up we also have Data East Arcade 2. We'll have a quick look at that. I'm not sure if there's any secret games if you put in Data East Arcade 1, but I'll probably keep that for another video if there is. I'm not entirely sure. There could be. I wouldn't be surprised. So we've got 12 games. We've got B-Wings, Crude Buster, Edward Randy, Last Mission, Joe Mac Returns, especially their Midnight Resistance, and a few others. Some pretty cool here. What game should we try? Chiho the Punch? Keep that for another video. Let's have a look at Edward Randy. That is cool. Sort of an adventure action game that reminds me a little bit like Indiana Jones. But sometimes the, the scan lines does make this does make the screen seem a little bit dark. Um, so maybe some games you might be better off turning it off to sort of change the brightness. I think this might be one of the, the instances where it would be better if it was off. Um, let's see. Yeah, it sort of makes it a little bit brighter. It obviously sharpens the graphics up slightly. It does vary from game to game. I think by and large having the uh, sort of scan lines on is, is definitely better, but in this case, probably not. Anyway, this is really cool, nice little game. Not really sure if this cart is worth buying though. I will have a look at it separately and I'll give my full review uh, in the coming days. Okay guys, finally we'll have a quick look at Metal Dragon and Life on Mars. Now probably one of these is, is ideal for um, this uh, with Metal Dragon will be quite cool because it's like a Merc style, Commando style game whereas the other game maybe might not be so great with the joystick but we'll have a look at Metal Dragon first as I say it's very arcadey and would be perfect for the Alpha yep it's screaming Metal Gear ripoff let's just jump past that you don't want to read that cheesy music as you can see it basically looks like Mercs meets Commando oh basically hold down the button, I don't know why I'm constantly pressing like a madman. But yeah, it's very arcadey, so it would be ideal for uh, your arcade alpha. Now the other game, Life on Mars, probably won't be the best game to play on this joystick. 
and this is probably where you want to maybe bring in the uh, joypad, but I'll have a quick bash anyway, but playing some game would be definitely better with some sort of other controller like the Evercade Alpha uh, gamepad. This might surprise me, it might actually be okay with the joystick. It's a platforming game. A Metroidvania style game, sorry. Let's quickly jump in. So, X to fire, A to jump. Yeah. It actually feels really nice on the joystick, surprisingly. I was actually going to suggest that you might want to use the gamepad, but surprisingly, it, it feels really nice uh, with the joystick. Maybe even better, that is surprising. So after this, I think this is obviously a Genesis game where it would, would have been designed for with a D-pad uh, in mind, but it, it seems to handle really well uh, with the joystick. Anyway guys, I will look at all of these carts uh, in far more detail in separate videos. This is actually quite nice. Okay guys, now if you want to watch a more in-depth video about all the different features of the uh, Evercade Alpha, I'll leave a link in the description for the Mega Man video. I'm not going to go into the same amount of detail, but I will have a quick bash uh, using the supplied gamepad with something like, say, Tomb Raider, and, and give you my feelings on that. Obviously, that would not be ideal to play on here with the joystick, and you obviously need the R2 and L2 buttons as well. But with adding a gamepad, it makes those games playable on this lovely screen. So as I said, you probably don't want to play Arcade uh, Tomb Raider with just the joystick. It really isn't fun at all, uh, and you're missing a couple of vital buttons to be able to control the character. Uh, and the layout just doesn't suit how Tomb Raider actually works. Now the controls are okay, but uh, you really need to be some kind of crazy psycho to be able to want to try and play it, this game with a joystick. It's absolutely impossible. You're going to need to insert your gamepad. Now I'm not really sure if I've found some sort of bug, but as soon as I put in the controller on this game, it doesn't actually want to recognise any of the buttons. Now it was working on the menu system, um, but it seems to have disabled some of the buttons, even trying to play the game, none of these buttons actually work, it won't start, not even the menu button, the only button that seemed to work was the menu button uh, on the controller, um, and it so obviously gives that, so I can't actually control anything in Tomb Raider, which is absolutely bizarre, I'm not sure if that's a bug with uh, Tomb Raider, uh, with these added controllers, uh, not sure, that just definitely happened as soon as I put it in there, so that is a little bit disappointing. So I just thought I'd check Tomb Raider 2, but the exact same thing's happening, nothing is controlling, it's basically disabled the controls on the actual alpha as well, which is absolutely bizarre. Um, can't do anything apart from pressing the menu button, which allows me to exit, I thought I'd actually have to turn the alpha off. Now I'm not entirely sure if that's a, a bug with this particular game, um, so I'll check another game just to make sure it's not um, the, the controller that's at fault. It's obviously moving the controls fine uh, on the menu system, but it, it doesn't want to work uh, playing Tomb Raider. Could be a known bug, hopefully, uh, and not, maybe it's a, a, something wrong with the cart as well, not entirely sure, but let me check another cart just to be sure. So far, so good. Yeah, so I'm, I'm getting to start the game fine by pressing the uh, sort of start button on the controls. Uh, yeah, I can see it's, it's actually controlling the character fine. Jumping, shooting, that's fine. So, it just seems to be a bug with Tomb Raider. Now, there might be some other teething issues with other games with added controllers. I never noticed anything with the Mega Man version. Um, and don't recall uh, having any issues with Tomb Raider. I guess I only tried with the joystick rather than an added controller. So, it might be a known bug. It could be an issue with the cart. I have no idea. But yeah, this game is terrific. Uh, and plays great with the, the D-pad as well. Although, as I said earlier in the video, it does handle quite well with the joystick as well. But probably it was designed for a D-pad, so I would probably recommend playing with the gamepad rather than the joystick anyway. Okay guys, so that's our look at the uh, Evercade Alpha Street Fighter Edition, the deluxe version with the Sanwar controls. Um, it's certainly very nice, I'm very impressed with this, um, and I've really enjoyed playing the Alpha games there. Um, is it really worth £250? Not really sure, it is quite expensive, a niche product, certainly not for everyone. But I have to say it does give extra life to those arcade games. Um, I've definitely been amazed playing some of these games, um, even the ones that I've just shown in this video. They've been really, really cool, definitely gives an extra life to them. And there's an awful lot of other games on Evercade 
that you'll probably get more life out of playing on this system. Now it's not for every game, no doubt about it. A few teething troubles that I noticed there with the Tomb Raider cart. Again, not sure if that's a known bug or just an issue with my cart, but it didn't really recognise the controls on, on the gamepad that I inserted and it basically disabled it, all the, the functions here. But a very nice arcade unit would make for a really nice Christmas present, I think. Great sound, that screen is fantastic as well. It's an 8 inch uh, screen. I'll leave the the sort of details if you want to know about that sort of thing but uh, I covered this more in depth with the Mega Man sort of video and I'll leave that link in the description if you want to look at that but still think this is a great machine um, obviously if you prefer Street Fighter you would probably rather this one otherwise you might want to buy the Mega Man version or if you're lucky enough to have enough cash you could maybe get both but I really think you need the space there's no doubt about it you need the space to be able to put this uh, somewhere I really don't have the space to have one never mind having two so I'm a bit insane I'm going to have to work out what the heck I'm going to do the Sanma controls are very nice a little bit softer to the touch are they amazingly different to the other ones? Probably not. Definitely softer to the touch, but hopefully more wear and tear, especially for your Street Fighter games. I'm definitely a little bit concerned that um, though this sort of top here though, might wear over time as well. It does seem nice. Ever, uh, so Blaze did say that they have coated it with some sort of special paint, so hopefully it will last the test of time. Not entirely sure. Getting off all those uh, bits of plastic is going to be a pain. You're probably going to have to take out all four screws to remove it properly. It's not a big job, but it is a little bit of a pain. Anyway guys, hopefully I've covered everything. I would definitely recommend this if you've got enough money and the space to put it. It's fantastic and it does bring a whole new life to those arcade carts that Evercade have released. Thanks very much for watching. Catch you again in the next one. Bye for now.